Hello and welcome to another episode of Movies That Make Us. I'm Jake. I'm Tracy. And I'm Val. And today we're talking about the Muppet movie. Yay! Whoa, I love the Muppets. Manamana. Love- <laughs> Manamana. Great. Do, 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 do. Great. That Manamana. song do, 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 will now be in my head for the rest of the day. And neither of you feel bad about it. Before Baby Shark, it was this song. Yeah. Jake almost <laughs> fell out of his chair. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. Muppet Movie came out in 1979. Yep. Which I, is a great year. Good, mm-hmm. good things came out of that year, from I what I understand there. <laughs> I happened to be four, and I had seen Star Wars in the theater. And okay. I kind of remember seeing it in the theater. I vaguely remember because we went a lot. Like, my mom was like, you were obsessed with that movie. So we went and saw that a lot, but I only kind of vaguely remember it. But the Muppet movie is probably the movie I remember for sure sitting in the theater and watching. And I was scared to death when Kermit almost gets run over by the by the road grader. Mm-hmm. I remember being like panicked and then, oh, OK, he's up on top. Well, yeah, okay. I mean, they do give okay. it a moment like it is just like the flat and and, 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 like, like, kinda, mm-hmm. and yeah, before you know, he's OK. He's, he's fine. He's OK. Yeah. Kermit's Kermit. OK. But I mean, the Muppets are just so great. Uh, they're just there's so many good quotes in this movie. It's just this. It's got a great story. It's a road movie. Mm-hmm. Jim Henson was a freaking genius. He well, really was. He had some big geniuses in this oh, movie. Yeah. I mean, Jim Henson, Frank Oz. Mm-hmm. If you know anything about Jerry Nelson and Richard Hunt, Richard Hunt, who does Scooter, is hilarious. And oh, yeah. He has. I watched a documentary on him once. Uh-huh. Crazy crazy backstory of a life so oh interesting yeah he's to look that up. yeah it's just so it's like all old hollywood oh yeah you had orson film. wells milton in this film. Burl. milton burl yep. orson wells mel brooks mel, mel brooks, brooks is in this yeah steve martin mm-hmm. dom de <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> it's <Dom. laughs> elliot gould bob, bob hope. hope bob hope was in this movie bob hope i mean is if in you this. can get bob hope to be in your movie he doesn't do jack i mean he's dead now but back then he didn't do <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert, jeez. I mean, if you get him in your movie now. Sure, I haven't seen him do anything for years. <laughs> Richard Pryor was in this film. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. I mean, the, the it's just incredible, well, the, the people thing, that they got to be in. The thing that I love is, like, they are pulling real performances out of these actors, and they're talking to some felt and a guy's hand. Right. You know, and these guys are actually what? acting with these things. What? Spoiler alert. What? <laughs> One of my favorite shirts has an x ray. <laughs> it has an x ray of Kermit the Frog, and there's this hand with oh the bones goodness. in the hand. Maybe up in the... you should have said, take the kids out of the room before oh, we spoil Christmas for them. Sorry, kids. <laughs> yeah. Wow, I am the villain. <laughs> this is early in the episode to become the this villain. This is taking a, an ugly turn for Tracy. Sorry, Here's I, this movie that I love, and now I feel... I like to throw that in there. No, but it, it, it is true. That's one of the things that's always been really fascinating to me about the Muppets is because they they are what should be really child characters. like these, yeah. Right. But they're interacting in the real world, mm-hmm. um, and they're doing it in a way that... that is serious, but it, in a fun way. Right, right. I mean, you have a rat working at a diner. Yeah. He's the cook. Yeah. Well, that's a Muppet in Manhattan, but that's okay. No, but he, that's fine. Yeah. But like, these yeah. are Muppets. Like, oh, these totally. are stories of Muppets. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, you know what we should do? Before, before <laughs> Ratatouille. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, he like skates on the griddle on butter. Right. Skates. That's not, that's not kosher. <laughs> Is that cook? No, I don't think so. It's not sanitary. In all my experience working in a diner, I've never seen the cook do that. (laughs) It's definitely not sanitary. No, No. it's absolutely not. But but I love that that's – because the Muppets really don't fit into any one category as far as is it a kid's movie, is it a a grown-up movie. It's just what it is. It's the Muppets. There's a lot of jokes in there that – you don't get as a kid. No. And then when you watch it as an adult, you're, you're like, like, oh. oh. <laughs> Muppets I, are dirty. Yeah. <laughs> dirty little Muppets. But kids, it yeah. just I goes over their I have heard stories head. that some of the outtakes of some oh, of the yeah. movies that they made well, are hysterical because they they go dark and they, <laughs> they well, go I, far. It's like us, but um, <laughs> when we're not on. So... But they tried to make that into a television show where the Muppets were a little off color, remember, two right. years ago? Mm-hmm. And that didn't work. No, no, it did not. We all like to giggle that 
it happens, but we don't really want to see it in real life well, as a show. I mean, ultimately, when the Muppets come on, I think there's a certain expectation that I'm going to be able to sit down with my kids. Right. And, yeah. right. and so the, the innuendos and stuff that go over their head, that's fine. Like, we get that a little bit in some of the Disney stuff. And so, oh, yeah. I, I mean, right. not to oh, the yeah. same level. Right. And, right. Well, there's a difference between being almost crass and or what they tried to make the Muppets edgy right for yeah. that TV series right. and the Muppets are not edgy no no like, they'll drop some jokes and some stuff like that but it, they're not edgy this right. movie was like the epitome of what they are and what we like a hundred percent absolutely yeah. well and this was back I mean let's face it the Muppets haven't been the same mm -hmm. since Jim Henson Past. No. I they mean, did the Christmas Carol? I think captures it. It does, yeah. and that was directed by his son. But the one since then, yeah. although I liked the Jason Segel Muppet movie, it was directed yeah. by the guys who do Flight of the Concords. Yeah, I liked that. That movie. one I, I liked that quite was a really bit. Fun. There, there have been some moments, but they've not been as consistently uh, yeah. absolutely, solid. Absolutely. And um, then the the one that came after with Tina Fey just wasn't very good. No. Although it does have one of my favorite lines is when Evil Kermit goes. Space bar, space bar, space bar. <laughs> like I dramatic pause is space bar, like space bar, space bar. I that movie more bar. because it had all of the yeah. elements to yeah. make a good movie, but yeah. it was kind of like Cars 2. There were some cute things in it, but ultimately we didn't need it. It just didn't, yeah. 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 And I think part of it is Disney, this is the one franchise that they've bought the rights to that they just don't really seem to know what to do with yeah. it. Mm -hmm. They haven't mm -hmm. found their formula like they have with the Marvel Yeah, movies. like no, Marvel, they got Pixar, it figured out yeah. pretty quick. Star Wars and I think Star Wars, they've gotten, yeah. gotten figured I mean, out. That's debatable to some people. Uh, yes, I know. <laughs> like I said, and half our audience that may like Star Wars has probably tuned us out now because yeah. I get it. But, but this seems to be the one that they just it's can't figure. Of, yeah. Even though, and with the Star Wars thing, even though people may not like the direction they're going in, Disney seems to have a vision for what they want yes. Star Wars to right. be. Right. And with the Muppets, they don't seem to have a vision yeah. of what they want the Muppets to be or do for them. They keep them. trying to reboot it. And yeah. They just don't. And when the Jason Segel film came out, I thought, okay, they got it. We're back on track. And then now it's languishing. And we had the, in the theme parks, we had the 3D movie. Yeah. Right. It's now yeah. gone away. And yeah. um, they have a little bit bigger presence in uh, Walt Disney World. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. There's a there's a Rizzo restaurant. Oh, fun. Um, a few things, but it's not. Does he ice skate on butter yeah. in the restaurant? I don't know. I didn't get to eat there. Oh. I wanted to, but all the Was reservations were gone. Was it closed down because, oh. Health code violations. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> But I think that'd be funny. That would if be there's hilarious. a Rizzo's restaurant, it's never open though. It's, it's closed. It's, it's never just open. boarded it's up. Closed. It's always closed. That's actually kind of genius. I think that would be fun. That would be it's, amazing. It's closed. And there's a big F on the door. <laughs> Infestation. I would probably go and try to get my picture, like go multiple times and try and get my picture trying to go Each in. Time, you know? yeah. It's still closed. My when we were little and we would go to Disneyland, my sister would always get her picture taken knocking on the door yeah. at the Mad Hatter. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. And the door never opened, but she would do it every time we went. And so yeah. we've got her like growing up knocking on the door. It's kind of fun. Nice. What would she do if one day it opened? She'd pee her I think we'd all freak out, actually. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the heck? Mad Hatter pops out. Whoa, hello. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't expecting you. Sorry. <laughs> To find our muchness. Well, it's in a way because of this movie, um, we not only have the Muppets, we got Sesame Street. Yes. Because of this movie. Yes. Yeah. And we all grew up we on Sesame Fraggle Street, Rock right? We got Fraggle Rock. Movie. We got the Dark dun, Crystal. Sorry. No, yeah. you're good. Fraggle no, Rock. Keep, <laughs> I don't think Down that's going to be the last time that somebody <laughs> sings during this episode, so I think we're okay. It's true. And I love that you even get a cameo of Big Bird in this movie. Right. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to a place called Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it. awesome. But yeah, this movie does really capture everything that we, I think, love about the Muppets because yeah. it is, it's just the Muppets. It is what they are. And it's hard to put them in any other term because yeah. they are yeah. their own thing. Yeah. I love the fact that this is a movie about trying, and this will this ties in nicely with last week's episode where we talked Goodwill Hunting, is about following your dreams and trying to make it. And, and even if you're a frog, you can you do can it. You can still do it, unless there's a madman who wants you to be the spokesperson for a frog leg restaurant. No, even if there is, you just keep going. <laughs> they won in the end. Like, they made it. This is true. So, yeah, it's... 
<laughs> I, love I, I love the ending where they get in and they like meet with the executive and he's like, sign them to the really big Orson star Wells. deal. Yeah. He, he, puts his, he, he like tags the receptionist. Yeah. Bring me the standard rich and famous contract. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> that's one of my favorite lines ever. Bring me the standard rich and famous contract. Because that's how it happens in Hollywood. It's just standard. You meet a producer, he gives you the rich and famous contract, you sign it, you're set. That's how it yeah. works. That's how you, your soul is gone. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what really happens. <laughs> your soul is gone. You have you get to make no more choices. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, but Orson Welles in that rich role. And famous. Yeah. <laughs> then he ended up making a movie that shall not be named. That was his one of his last Daredevil. ones. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. You can talk about Daredevil. All right. Yeah. <laughs> There's no like reason to, that we really need to, to talk I about you, it. I like to make you feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> she oh. likes to shame you. All right, no, well, that's I'm fair. Not a shamer. I just I like you to recognize what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> That's spoken like a true parent right there. <laughs> what did we learn? If you didn't listen to last week's episode, you need to for context. All right. <laughs> but I mean, just some of the characters, like Gonzo. He's my yeah. Gonzo favorite. is just so great. And so they're trying to convince him to go on the road with them. Yeah. And he's like, we're, we're going on a trip to follow our dreams. And Gonzo's like, well, I have dreams. What's your dream? And he's like, you're going you're gonna to think it's dumb. No, no, tell us. He says, well, I want to be in a Bollywood film, so I'm going to go to India. And they're like, you don't go to Hollywood. You, you, go, to, you go to Hollywood. You don't go to India and, to be a movie star. And God's was like, well, yeah, if you want to do it the easy way. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Gonzo's always been one of my favorites Me because he's, favorite. a, he's his own guy. Like yeah. he does what he wants mm -hmm. and it's weird. But he's happy. He is yeah. having so much fun. He's in love with the chicken. Yeah, yeah. which is and fine. Yeah. And Don't. he shoots himself out of cannons and yeah, totally. He's living his best life. <laughs> he really is. I, I love when they pull into the church and they <laughs> like recap everything that happened and then they fall asleep. <laughs> so then the electric mayhem man decides to help them hide their car right. by painting it the brightest <laughs> colors you've ever seen. Well, they're going to be looking for a frog and a bear and a brown Studebaker. Well, that's definitely not a brown Studebaker <laughs> now, so they should be fine. And then they're like, and then it works. <laughs> it works when they get to the side and they pull and it like blends in it perfectly with the side. It camouflages yes. with the side against the road and Doc Hopper just drives right on by. Yeah. <laughs> is it weird like, that his name is Doc me. Hopper and he sells frog legs? Right? That's, yeah. I mean, I don't think it's a coincidence. <laughs> he was born what? for this. <laughs> he was born for this. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> just so much nonsense, but it's great. Oh. Like you don't, it's not like now I feel like if these movies were made now, we're so jaded, jaded mm -hmm. that we would be like, oh, it's just nonsense. Like I don't, there's so much, there's so many problems. Like I just mm -hmm. hear the voices of people, but it's just fun. It's charming. It's yeah. just like you go in, you just let go of everything that is reality and you just have a good time and you learn things about yourself. Mm hmm. Like, I think we all, when Kermie has his moments, we all feel like we've had those moments. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I was younger and I watched it, I didn't. I didn't. Right. But now when I watch it, I'm like, yeah. oh. Well, then you've got <laughs> the it's whole. It's not easy being green. you got the it relationship with right. Piggy. She's very difficult to be around sometimes. She's very demanding. Saying? and No, I'm not saying you. <laughs> I'm just saying in terms of Whoa. learning things. Whoa. <laughs> I just okay. wanted to make you feel really Ooh. uncomfortable. This is how Did you felt work? with Daredevil. Huh? Yeah, that's okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. She just wants you to know what you've done, <laughs> apparently. No, it's great because Piggy and Kermie like should not be together for more than no. a reason. Like there are a lot of reasons why I mean, let's that talk relationship shouldn't work. Biologically, I don't, scientifically, I don't. I mean, if you saw a frog and a pig in real life, they're not even close to the same size. No. I mean, in this movie, they're a little off, but in real life, no. Yeah, it's yeah. not even close. Yeah. But but personality wise too, she is so overbearing. She's, oh yeah, so, she's flamboyant. Oh yeah, and just, yeah, outspoken yeah. and and what I love about Kermit is he just he's all he right with like her. that's who she is mm -hmm. and he's not trying to change her. Nope. He I think he knows he gets that she's obnoxious and, sometimes. Yeah, sure, but he right. doesn't try to change her. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just like okay, piggy. Yeah. Yeah. He just goes along with it. I I love it. And I think there's something to be said about that. Like, I think when you're in a relationship, you want to bring out the best right. of the other person mm -hmm. and you hope that they bring out the best in you. But I don't think that's the same as wanting to change who they are. Mm -hmm. Like you accept who they are and then you help each other be the best 
selves you can be, right? Yeah, right. and hashtag goals. Hashtag goals. <laughs> <laughs> we're not only helping you with movies, but we're helping you with uh, relationship. Listen, items. we get real here sometimes, all it's right? True. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> so now back to the shenanigans <laughs> of this movie. I love some of the titles of the places. The oh, El Sleezo. El yes. Sleezo. <laughs> it's perfect. And that has one of the best recurring jokes in the whole movie. When the bar patron comes up and she's like, hey, sailor, buy me a drink. And then this other guy comes up and he's like, did he touch you? She's like, he did. He touched my arm. That's going to give you warts. That's a myth. What? Yes. It's a myth. It's a myth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it then keeps she, recurring. This, this woman shows up. Yes. And, yeah. <laughs> Every it, time. It, recur it recurs. And Kermit even mentions that. Yeah. He says, grief. It's a running gag. <laughs> They're, they're like self-aware. Well, it starts out movie. being self-aware. And yeah. they break the walls. In yeah, the yeah. And I, I love, love it that. Before it was even really a the thing The electric to do mayhem that. read the script. Well, when they get... <laughs> the movie starts with them in a theater to watch the movie. That's, yeah, yeah. And his nephew's like, Uncle Kermit, is this the story of how the Muppets came to be or whatever? And he's like, yeah, more or less. <laughs> and then they go into the movie. And it's... So it it's... It's very really meta. cool because that didn't happen as much, I think, right. back then. It was it was more – I think we see it now more. But it was like – it did it before Deadpool did. You know, it was mm -hmm. Deadpool before Deadpool was cool. Yeah. So uh, Fozzie, what are your thoughts on Fozzie? Oh, I love Fozzie too. <laughs> <laughs> this who's really who's bad comic Muppet? that gets – I think Fozzie might be it because I like to think I'm really funny, but I'm probably really not. <laughs> yeah. But I'm just going to keep going and just like be waka, totally waka. not aware, you know, mm -hmm. and who's I love your, that. Who's your spirit Muppet? Probably Kermit trying to be a good person and keep things under control, but occasionally loses his stuff. <laughs> There's so many. I like there's yeah. different aspects of your personality that you can relate to. Like I can relate to Gonzo a lot, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Um I just love the earnestness of Fozzie. Yeah. Yes. He's just he just is like so driven to just He's every he's kind of like the Samwise. Yes. Yeah, he, you know, he yes, is. that's if, a great if, comparison. If Kermy and Fozzie, like they're if they were put in the Lord of the Rings, they would be I would watch that. I would watch the Muppet version of Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I'd watch it. I would totally watch <laughs> it. Like, well, I'm trying to oh, think, I like, how do I feel about this? What about you, Val? What's your spirit, Muppet? Uh, Beaker. Beaker? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I love Beaker. <laughs> me, 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 me. And he sounds different in this movie than he, he does normally does. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you don't understand why you like him, but you do. Yeah. I feel like that's me. <laughs> well, and he's... <laughs> He seems, you don't understand anything that he's saying, no. but you're listening. And he's always like busy doing something, uh -huh. and it's usually something crazy, and we're, and you don't know. Yeah, and you he's don't know a what great he's foil thinking, for Bugs and Bunny. Do yeah, yeah. I, I Beaker is my yeah. Just like Hey Hey is my spirit animal in Cartoon World. Ah, hey, I, hey, like hey, I like that. Yeah. Hey, I like Hey Hey too. That. All right. Yeah. Spirit Muppets. <laughs> What's your spirit Muppet? Let us know. know your guys' spirit yeah. Muppet. Make sure Send you put it. it on the comment below on our Facebook page. That'd Absolutely. Do you have a favorite pun from this movie? Oh. A favorite pun? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I, I think the myth one is probably my favorite okay. because it is, it's, it's so blatant and it's just ridiculous. <laughs> and the fact that they keep bringing it up is just funny <laughs> to me. Um, I, I love when Kermit was driving across the country in the, in the Studebaker, which is yes. the bear's natural habitat. The natural habitat of, a bear, of a bear. The bear, yeah. And, well, two things. Kermit asked him where he learned how to drive, and he says he took correspondence classes. Yes, that was <laughs> – I love that moment. How do you take a correspondence course to learn how to drive? It's like taking a correspondence course to learn how to swim. But, or, but the pun that I love is when Kermit's looking at the map, and he tells him to take a ride at the fork in the road. Yes. And he's like – Turn right at the fork in the road, and there's a gigantic fork Literal right fork in the in middle the of the road. And Kermit's like, I don't believe that. <laughs> just keep going. Yep. You can't even sing. Your voice is dumb. Moving right along. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, should it be snowing? What? No. What? <laughs> and then it just cuts, and they're back in the sunshine driving along. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just so many. It's like, what should we do in this scene? I don't know. What haven't we done yet? Well, these props over here are laying around, so let's ah, do something them, Throw them in there. Like, there were no rules, you know? There was yeah. an idea, and that was it. Yeah. There was just a really good idea. And then they just went with it. I'm sorry, I can't stop thinking about like Lord of the Rings with Kermie oh, and Fozzie. That would like, be I, fantastic. Somebody is make Miss that Piggy happen? the the elf? I can't think of her name. Forgive me, Lord of the Rings fans. Ar uh, Arwen. Arwen. Yeah. No, that doesn't work out at all. Uh, what about the the drummer from the band? She can. She's kind of. 
Oh, Janice. Yeah. 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 She yeah could Janice can pull that off. Yeah. I could see I that. I could see that. Uh, no, I don't know. Is Gonzo Sarin? No. <laughs> No. He played Darth Vader. That's true. In the Star Wars parodies. I know. I don't know why he always gets cast as like the <laughs> villain type when they do those kind of movies. Just because he's fun as a villain. I guess. <laughs> I liked it better in like Muppets Christmas Carol where he was Charles Dickens. That was like because I don't. He can't be one of the main characters. I because he just doesn't fit anywhere. Right. So mm-hmm. they put him in a narrator role and it seems to really work. That for was him. a good yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't see him as Sauron at all. No. <laughs> We'll have to think about the casting of this film a little bit more. Yeah. To you. yeah. Maybe we'll make that a post. <laughs> if this was a movie. Cast this for us. Cast would, it for us, yeah. Our friends at Matinee Heroes do, do that. They recast a movie with yeah. anybody in time and space. And yeah. That would be a good one. Which I don't know how you would do that with this movie. No. No. You, no. Yes, <laughs> Muppet movie would be very difficult. But yeah. Lord of the Rings Muppets. We, that's yeah. kind we of what do, I was thinking. We yeah. could do that. I do have to say I'm really <laughs> glad that nobody picked Sam the Eagle as their spirit Muppet because that would be really difficult. Because <laughs> Sam is really funny in small doses. But yeah. man, Sam. I know someone like that. I know a couple like <laughs> Sam. <laughs> I have a Sam in my life. I don't hang out with those Sams too often. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> funny in doses. I think it'd be awesome just to hang out with the with the electric teeth. Yeah, that would be just be a fun. Mm. You know that they're doing all sorts of the electric mayhem. Recreational. Man. They don't even care, man. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. they're just like they're whatever. Just, hey, hang out, play some music. I yeah. don't think yeah. any of them can actually see anything. <laughs> Probably not. No, animal can, but he can't function. True, so, like, but he, he can play the drums somewhere. Yeah. Did you ever see the video where Dave Grohl from the Foo yes. Fighters and? Animal had a drum off. Oh my gosh, that is! If you haven't seen that, go go Google that that and look that that out. All right, I'll find that clip. So we'll share it on the page. And and it's like it's it's weird to me that Disney doesn't know what to do with them because we all are so ingrained with the Muppets. We grew up on these characters. I know they're they're redoing everything right now. It's crazy that they're not touching the Muppets. They they are. They announced yesterday that they're doing a a Disney Plus. I had heard rumors series. It's called the Muppet Studio. So I don't know. What it will be. Well, I hope it's more old it, school Muppets. What, I, I just saw a picture of it and it looks like they're going to do it wrong again. Oh, no. Because it looks mm. very similar to like the, the Muppet tonight. sitcom. Maybe I need to kinda. figure out who to email to tell them about the Lord of the Rings Muppet movie. Yeah. <laughs> just, but then they've got to work with Warner Brothers to get the rights to do Lord of the Rings because but that's who's got the rights. And then it's going to be on Amazon that. Prime instead of being on Disney Plus. And <sighs> Yeah, and Amazon and Disney pl- apparently are not playing nice right now. <laughs> yeah, that's what I have heard, yes. So. Disney's taking all their toys and going home. <laughs> well, yeah, because Disney's like, we're not going to put it on your device. Oh, so. yeah, you think your house is cooler? I'm going to make a cooler house, and I'm going to put everybody over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there were a lot a lot of announcements yesterday, so yeah, I'm interested I to see. Up, I mean, it was my yeah, birthday. Like the Marvel ones were huge. The, the biggest one was ever. The Mandalorian. Yeah, I watched that five times I, already. I don't know. Mandalorian was huge because they had a trailer and it's the one that's dropping right. with the launch of their service. But Ewan McGregor coming back and yes. confirming that yep. he's going to be Obi-Wan. But I knew that was going to happen. So yeah. it wasn't like, I announced that weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. And everybody's like, that's just a rumor. I said, I feel it. I it's feel it in the ha- force. In the force, it's going to happen. And then <laughs> there it was. It was awesome. So all you naysayers suck it. Yeah. Wow. Well, when people, people like got on my post about like, this is, you shouldn't post rumors. And somebody's like, Val doesn't post rumors. And I'm like, boom. Mm, drop the mic. I do my research before I just like willy nilly post yeah. things. We're not, most we're of not the here time. for clickbait yeah. most of the time. We don't play in that room. Yeah, we don't. Yeah. We don't. Um, unlike everybody else who's lost their crap because of the Sony Marvel oh split that yeah. isn't even really a split yet. Yeah. I mean, it's not a, yeah, I was wondering if we were going to talk about that. We should do an episode where we just kind of go through Spider-Man from like the exist, like when Spider-Man started to when Marvel sold to when Sony started to when, like we should do a whole episode mm-hmm. on yeah. that and what's That'd be going good. on. I'd be down with yeah, that. Let's yeah, let's do that. We can, we can totally do that. It would be our third Spider-Man episode. And That's I'm okay. totally, uh, totally I, I on board with that. I expect us to have at least four more. So. <laughs> before the end of the year. <laughs> no, I don't know that it needs to be before the end of wow. the year. Wow. That's a lot. 
Oh, we got to fit the Star the Wars in Yeah, Star Wars. <laughs> We've got to have like a month of Star Wars leading And then as soon as Disney oh. Plus comes out, we'll spend some time yes. in a dark room watching Disney Plus. Yes. And mm-hmm. then we'll talk about some Disney Plus things. We'll be like... Because it doesn't Z- need to be just movies that are in, you know, theaters. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, we'll be like Zoner in the Stolen Droids podcast. We'll just build a little pillow fort and we'll watch Disney Plus and we'll, pro- we'll broadcast Did from they there. do that without us? They d- down in Texas, Colin yeah. drove to Texas what? and they made a pillow fort and they recorded. Why haven't we built a pillow fort together? We can. I don't know why we haven't. I just, That'd be I a did. very Muppet thing to do. It would be a very it Muppet would. thing to do. Oh, hey, Muppets. <laughs> okay. There are a lot of cameos in this. A lot of <laughs> yes, stars that show so up. Many mm-hmm. good. My my favorite is mm-hmm. is Steve Martin. As I was the just waiter gonna go there because oh my he gosh. is the worst waiter in the world, <laughs> and he is so snarky. To and I, I think and in Kermit. real life he would be yeah the wor- on purpose. Mm-hmm. Yes, because mm-hmm. it's funny. Yes, right, and I think right. he even did that bit in some of his stand up. I think so. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. But I love the line. Would Monsieur like to smell the bottle cap? You know, <laughs> he's so... Um, and Kermit doesn't know what to do. He's like, is that what you're supposed to... Uh, yes. yes. So he smells it. And he's like, would you like to taste the wine? He's like, well, why don't you taste it first or whatever? And so he does. And it's like disgusting. It's great. <laughs> His face. He just has the total yes. disgusted look. He's like, no, no, it's fine. It's great. Yeah, I, he he's great. Orson Welles, of course, yes. is fantastic with the standard rich and famous contract. <laughs> um, what other cameos that were in their favorites? Oh, I mean, Steve Martin was my fave, but um, I'm trying to think of when they were. Now I can't think. My brain's totally. I put everybody on the spot. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, we should have been prepared. We should have been prepared. But I think there's. There, it was just. It's fun to watch it because they the people do kind of pop up, and a lot of them is just a really quick. Like they pop in and it. Right. And if you blink, you miss it. Well, and and so then when you look back through the, the list, you're like, wait, that person was in that. I mean, Bob yeah. Hope. I mean, it was huge. Well, and, and some of their other movies, like Muppets Take Manhattan, we had Dabney Coleman. Mm-hmm. Um, we had uh, Richard Pryor. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple others, but um, I do have to say we haven't. This is one of my other favorite lines that I have to make sure we mention is when Miss P says to Kermit, "Whisper sweet nothings in my ear." <laughs> motorcycle cop. <laughs> motorcycle cop's <laughs> a sweet motorcycle nothing. Cop. Nope. Motorcycle cop is chasing us. <laughs> to remember yeah. that. Yeah. Whether well, they're on the on the bus with the band, yeah. yeah. Motorcycle, motorcycle cop. cop. What? I'm going to try that out later. Just yeah. Be- <laughs> It's it is a lot of fun. The music in it, we've got to talk about the music yes. because it's got oh, a ton Albert of great Finney. musics. Oh, that's Albert right. Albert Finney. I yes. love Albert Finney. Yes, I forgot about that. Oh. He did a great. Speaking of Christmas carols, he did a great version of a Christmas carol. Um, there's a there's a scene where after Scrooge is dead and he's in the future watching this, everybody is talking about. This, this, how happy they are. And he gets all excited and giddy and it's because he's dead. And they sing this song called thank you very much. And they're like singing about how uh-huh. him dying yeah. is the best thing that ever happened to him. <laughs> and they're dancing on his coffin. It Holy is so cow. Dark, Don't do that in real life. That's great. so nice. It That's a nice. great film. You shouldn't do that. But. Um, the movie, The Electric Mayhem. Well, they don't look like Presbyterians to me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many great lines. But um, I love The Rainbow Connection. Uh, yeah. That I song mean, I think, just. Yeah. I think our generation just, you know, that grew up with this and that yeah. song, it's. Yeah. It's, it it's, it's just ties the every whole time movie I hear it together, you know? It does. And it's just so simple and so, you know. Um, but I mean, they're, are you going to give us a little taste? Why are there so many <laughs> songs about rainbows? <laughs> that was really good. I just I remember it too. Is like I think in my generation as well is we all learned that song in elementary school to yep. sing at yes. some you know elementary school whatever uh-huh. a little get together where yeah. the parents and come in and watch the rainbows and rainbows that we made uh-huh. and we swayed them back and forth. That's weird that like everybody has done the that. Lover. The dreamers, the dreamers and me. See, I sing better when I'm doing the Kermit da, voice. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I love the yeah, um, the song at the end where they're singing about. It starts with a dream. Mm-hmm. You're building up steam. You're giving. You know, you're building up hope. And yeah, um, the I'm trying to think of which one that one's called. The 
anyway, but you know, it starts when you're a kid. You know, yeah. You're busy in school. Um, what are, what's one of your favorite? I love the moving right along song. I really do. <laughs> I love moving right along. I can't do a road right trip along. without putting do, do, that one do, do, on, the, do, do. on the mix. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's a total For road trip song. Fancy free. Yeah. I know. I love moving right along. The fun. Come take it with me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh. You know all the songs, man. <sighs> I rewatched it recently, but I grew up on this movie. We were yeah. big Muppets fans in my in my house. We had Sesame Street and the Muppets, and yeah, that was a big deal for, for yeah. us. But yeah. I remember um, when I was younger, they did a Jim Henson thing downtown in Salt Lake where you could go in and they had um, – it was like this open exhibit and they had all the puppets and you could go oh, down and see and you could get inside. Cool. And, and it was like the most surreal thing that I had ever done because we watched all the shows, the Fraggle Rocks and the Muppet mm -hmm. shows and all of that. And, um, but <laughs> Jim, it was some Jim Henson exhibition where they brought it all in and like they had puppeteers kind of showing you that's how everything awesome. moved that's and cool. you could go in and see, it was really, really cool. Like sometimes I, you know, when you're so young and you remember an experience, you're like, was that a dream? Yeah. Or did that really happen? Uh -huh. Like that's one of those. I'm like, did I dream that up or did that really happen? I think it really happened. That's cool. <laughs> that's cool. I didn't get to experience that. Yeah. I wish I had. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. My dream is to someday, and they don't offer tours, but I would love to do a tour of the Henson Studios. Yeah. Oh, that would be really cool. They don't do public tours. You have to know somebody that will give you a tour. Well, but... you know what the Henson Studios looks like now, right? I mean, you've seen it in the movie. It's just broken down. And, and kind of boarded up. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not really what it looks like. Well, what? from the from the things that I've seen, it's a very nondescript um, gate, and you could just drive past it and never know. But yeah. then inside is, you know, Where just really cool. Happens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I love this movie. I love the meaning behind it. I love the message behind it, following your dreams, sticking to it. Having a diverse amount of friends. Yeah. I mean and meeting and stopping people along the way and actually talking to them and getting yes. to know them regardless of their background. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I love that as they went, they not just me it, collecting the Muppets as yes. they went, right? Mm -hmm. I thought that was great you that it was like, too, you oh, you it's kind of like the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Oh, you have something too? Let's go. We're Let's do it. it the, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Except for the large guy, Harry, where they <laughs> they mistook when he ran back to the car dealership. Like, you, you have a dream? Come with us to Hollywood. He comes running out with and his he comes luggage. Running, hey. And they drive off and he comes running back out. <laughs> Wait for me. Hi, guys. so bad for him. <laughs> but he made it in the right. end. He got he, there. He did make yeah. it. He made it at the very end. he missed all the tomfoolery. <laughs> the ballyhoo, if you the will. Bally -hoo, the ballyhoo. Yeah. <laughs> but but it is a great message, and I love the moment where, right before he has the face off with Doc Hopper, mm -hmm. before that gets ridiculous because Animal comes out. <laughs> um, but as he thanks to Beaker and Bunsen Honeydew, yeah. yes. Yeah. But as he's thinking about it and he's having that conversation with himself. I love that his inner self is much more motivating than my inner self. My inner yeah. self is usually like, you really can't do this. I don't know why you're <laughs> trying. And I'm like, I'm not going to listen to you anymore. Uh -huh. I need a more positive. Yeah, I've got to get an inner <laughs> Kermit. But he is. He's talking to him like, okay, but you believe the dream. And do you still believe the dream? Are you, you know. Right. And because he felt he feels like he's a failure. They've come this far and they're not going to make it. And they were following him mm -hmm. and his inner self. No, they had a dream and they believed in the dream and they still believe in the dream. And right. if you do, then you've got and, – and it's a powerful moment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. When two Absolutely. green frogs are talking to each other, it's still a really it's powerful awesome. yeah. moment. Yeah. yeah. I think you just when you're watching this film, if you're doing the right thing as a viewer, you forget that they're yeah they're just characters. Yeah. They're they're actually yeah they're people. They're well, and some of the shots, real. I mean, like we're so used to seeing them from the from the waist up, right? But there are shots where Kermit's walking down the floor. Kermit and Fozzie do a dance routine on stage when he's riding the bike. Where he's riding it's the bike. Amazing. It's yeah. like I still don't know how they pull What's off some of these things. You know. <laughs> I mean, but it, it's a, it's amazing when you the, watch that it. dancing at the El Slizo and the crowd's throwing stuff at him and it's one, two, three kick. And Fozzie's like, Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, kick. okay. <laughs> I love the enduring friendship with, with Fozzie and, and Kermit. That's one of my favorite matchups mm -hmm. um, yep. in cinema. Those two just work really, really, really mm -hmm. well together. Yeah. Fozzie. And I, I love the comparison to him as a Samwise yeah. Gamgee or, uh, he he is kind of that permanent mm -hmm. sidekick, but he's like the best kind of sidekick mm -hmm. because that is his role in yeah, this and life, he, and he and is going to be the best darn sidekick. Yeah, yeah. Yep. and and I love that about him because I think there are each of us are different personalities, and 
you know, not everybody's going to be the leading man or the leading well, lady. If everybody was a leader, we would get nothing done. Right. right. And so there's nothing wrong with being a Fozzie. But I love the thing is Fozzie has his moments to shine. Yeah, absolutely. He gets well, to be a leader does. in a lot of ways. Yeah. Exactly. Everybody yeah. does. But yeah, I mean, I tell like I my daughter is graduating from high school this year. I have a senior, you know, and I you're not old enough to have a senior. To, I just turned 40. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, and we have I have the conversation with her since she was younger is you know, you kind of figure out where you fit in life. You're a leader, you're a follower, you're a business owner, you're a business worker, mm -hmm. you know, and we, everyone is important. Right. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to feel unimportant because you're not the one running the company. That person running the company needs doers, you know, needs mm -hmm. followers, doers. And, you know, I, so I just think this movie is like that. You have some leaders and the leader doesn't even want to be the leader. Most of the time, the leader just wants to ha be with his friends. Right. Right. You know, and, and when you doesn't want to be responsible, no, just, you know, and so I, I like, yeah, I, I would like that on a shirt. There's nothing wrong with being the Fozzie. Oh, I like that, that a good idea. shirt idea. That you is a good shirt it. idea. I'm just saying good job. But I like the idea of putting it on a <laughs> shirt. <laughs> we need to get. Nothing wrong with being a Fozzie. <laughs> we need to get like a shirt shop put together online. online. Little yeah. movies that make a shirt shop. Yeah. I like so this. every time we come up with something that should be on a shirt. We can just put it on a shirt and then people can <laughs> buy go. it. There'll be like a little flamingo hidden somewhere on the shirt. Yes. yes. Hidden flamingos. <laughs> I love hidden flamingos. That's a great idea. That's the name of my band in high school. Hidden flamingos. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> I don't know if it's the, the innocence of the Muppets, but we have not had to make anything where you would have to bleep it. There's been no necessary oh. bleeps in this one. We I haven't talked about goals. cats. <laughs> <laughs> we, I mean, we did that one episode where Val went off about cats and you had to do a lot yeah, of work on that That's really only been one, one episode. <laughs> I, you make it sound like we have a I'm lot fine, of content that needs to be edited. We I'm really teasing. Usually yeah. keep it pretty family friendly. Yeah, we do. We do. Every once in a while, I open my mouth and, and bad things come out of it. And that episode just kind of became kind of a running joke to start so bleeping funny. it out because oh, it yeah. was funny. It was yeah. great. Yeah. Cats are dicks. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you had to bring it up, Tracy. It wouldn't be an episode without it. Come yeah. on. Plus, I just think people should know. Well, <laughs> it's like a PSA. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> As a former cat owner, I'm with Jake on this one, but that's okay. No, I mean, I'm sure you have some people have loving cats, but at the end of the day, they don't need you. No, the cat that's is very true. independent, I and that's why I like them. I, I like the cat. I want cat's be with you because you need the cat right. more than the cat needs you. Whereas a dog can't live without you. Yeah. Usually. Yeah, that's right. good. I yeah. love my two dogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dogs are. I love Great. dogs too. Yeah. I, just, okay. I like dogs. I like cats. I like frogs, pigs, weirdos, <laughs> <Chickens>. bears. <laughs> and Ralph the dog. My, we were watching it and my wife said, what is Gonzo anyway? I said, he's a weirdo. Mm -hmm. he's well, weird. I know, but like, what is he? He's, he's a, a weirdo. weirdo. We don't know. We never <laughs> know what, what Gonzo is except that he's a weirdo. I love it. And that's like my term of endearment for my daughter. I'm like, I love you, weirdo. And my uncle got so mad at me one time. Why are you calling her that? That is not nice. And I'm like, it's not nice, I guess, in your family. Yeah. But it's the what the connotation that you put on it. I right. love Gonzo. He's a weirdo. And calling my daughter a weirdo is, I, tell, I love you. Mm -hmm. I'd be weird all day long. Yeah. Let your weird flag fly. I Absolutely. tell my kids that they're weird all the time. Yeah, it's good. And they've kind of now realized that I mean it with all the love in the yeah. world. You know, like mm -hmm. I'm yeah. proud of who my kids are. Yeah. And so... And part of that is they're all weird. And they probably got most of that from me. And yeah, that makes me fault. happy. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm totally okay with it, you know. Mm -hmm. So Speaking of your kids, we got to mention really quick, um, they're going to be at Fan X. They are going yes, to be at Fan so X. They, are, they have a panel. They do have a panel. I'm so excited for this panel. Yeah, we're going to teach some sign language. And we're hopefully we'll do it well. My kids are making the list right now. Right. I mean, not literally right now, but like right. yeah. working on it. And... Um, so hopefully we'll have some good signs to teach. And I, I would like to do more than just like, here are the names of superheroes or whatever, but like right. teach some phrases and things like that I too. I think that's going to be so much ASL's fun. ASL is a great, My incredible language. almost wants to go just for that, but she's still not going. <laughs> she has, a, she so has close. Like big crowds. Yeah, uh, I can understand that. She doesn't that. like nerdy things. I don't know what I did wrong. I think I pushed it on her too young. Mm. You didn't do anything wrong because you're letting her be herself. <laughs> yeah. And that's the most important thing you can do with kids. Yeah, true story. So it's hard. You want them to like the things that you like, yeah. but they don't always. No. Like my son is way into Pokemon and Beyblade, and I cannot get him 
into anything that I like, but he's way into what he does like. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yep, and that's cool. Yeah, but yeah, they. I'm excited for them to have the opportunity to teach some sign language and share that with with others. So, I think it's cool. Fun. Yeah. So, should we grade this movie? Let's grade it. I give it a solid B. Yeah, I think that's pretty fair. I'm going A just because of the nostalgia and the history and it means so much to me on kind of like when Ghost World Hunting to yeah. you, this being the first film I remember actively sitting in the theater right. watching. Um, we watched it all the time and grew up with it. I, I'm a big Muppet nerd, so it's an A for me. That's Not all Muppet movies are A's. No, but I agree. This one to me, this is the this is the best one. And then I would say probably Muppets Take Manhattan. Is yeah, the, like is the one. next one for me? A lot of people like Great Muppet Caper. I'm not as big of a fan yeah, on that. Yeah, I'm not. One. A, I'm, yeah, I'm not either. But um, to me, this one's an A. See, I, I like this one a lot, and I think because of the cultural impact, because it is such a staple, I mm-hmm. I would go probably B plus mm-hmm. on it. Mm-hmm. Um, my f- personal favorite Muppet movie is Muppet Christmas Carol, and when it's we get one. a little bit closer to Christmas, I yeah. would like to talk about yeah. that movie at some point. We're mm-hmm. going to do a countdown to Christmas movies. Yeah, yep. and, I, and it's one of my favorite Christmas movies, ah, that's not a good just one. Muppet movies. That one's so, a really good one. Um, but this one is is a out of outside of that one because that one and like Muppet Treasure Island, I feel are a little bit different as far as Muppet, Muppet yeah. movies go. This one is probably my favorite, so nice. I like it. Yep, I, I think it's a B. I think it's a great movie. I love the music. I love the characters and, you know, all that. But you guys know how I categorize things yep. into mm-hmm. an A mm-hmm. is that I'm not just going to, like, sit down and watch it all the time. Like, right. Like, I do like it and I will watch it, but it's just not one of those that I'm like, oh, Oh, really? it's Friday. If, Let's yeah, pop this in. Yeah. If yeah. It's, yeah I, and I, I can understand that. Like, if it's on TV or something and you're flipping through the channels yeah. and it's like nothing else, real, yeah, I'll sit down. It's on and yeah. I'll have it on. But I don't know that I would necessarily put it in just to watch it yeah. unless there was a reason to. Mm. So yeah. I can understand that. Yeah, yeah. that works. Yeah. And not that I don't enjoy it when I do watch no, it. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can understand what you're saying. Cool. Yeah. Well, what do you think about the Muppet movies? Which ones do you like better? Who is your um, Spirit, Spirit Muppet? Spirit Muppet. Yes. Uh, we want to know that. Go ahead and you can comment below on the on the link as we post them on our social media or you can email us. Podcast at movies that make us.com. And if you have anything that you've disagreed with, like anything that t- Tracy said, you're welcome. <laughs> we haven't done that for a while. We haven't. We haven't thrown uh, you no, under the bus complaints like that. Yeah. yeah, I was the villain early, but we, yeah, we kind of moved past, past that. Yeah. Past yeah. It. We didn't I don't think we need to resurrect it. Yeah, probably no, not. No, we'll just good. not do it. We'll move <laughs> if forward. If you have any movies that you would like us to cover um, that we haven't covered, uh, please let us know. We're going to have um, a lot of things that are going to come out of FanX. So mm-hmm. we're going to be doing, and we'll have a lot of guest people on yeah. um, for our FanX. I'm sure we're going to record more than one. We might have some bonus. Yeah. Um, well, we'll definitely, we'll have at least one that will be the live one that we're going to do. Yeah, Hopefully we can get the audio right movies. on that one. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I'm excited to talk about because there's a lot of time travel movies. Yeah. Um, like almost every major franchise has done a time travel movie yes. at some point. So yes. um, I'm excited. Are to we going to talk about, about Die Hard? Yeah, it's the best one. Okay. It's the best right. one. <laughs> <laughs> every time. Grief, it's a running gag. <laughs> but but well, I... We've got panels together. Like you and I are on a on a panel, a couple panels. Yeah, we're on a couple other uh, panels Val and together. and I are on a couple panels together. Um, we've got the whole group together. We'll probably record an episode with Colin and probably Zach. Yeah. We'll have some shenanigans there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think, and there's a couple of good ones that we could do with Colin and Zach. I mm-hmm. think that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. We should grab Craig Price from Matinee. Yeah. Heroes. We need he's to grab him and get so him again, on the air while he's here. Bonus episodes yeah. that we might have more than one. We, we may be able to get like yeah. a whole month or even more content out of yeah. Fan X. And so. maybe give them to you early instead of, I mean, I think it'd be fun to have some bonus. Yeah. We can mm-hmm. do that. Bonus episodes. We can definitely, definitely do that. Um, and then we, we will be having, uh, later in the month, Zoner will be back in town and we're going to do a, a podcast an, a crisis on infinite podcast podcast. <laughs> so crossing over with stolen droids. Yeah. I like that. It'll yeah. be fun. Yeah. So that's kind of the mothership, the stolen droids. Yeah. 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 I was talking with them just the other day. So crisis of infinite podcast. That's good. Yeah. That was good. But, like that. So some fun stuff coming yeah. up. Like really, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. is going to be a lot of fun. We are like everywhere at FanX. It's I mean, such a yeah. good time to be a geek. It, it really is. is. Oh my it gosh, is. we have like just a, an abundance of riches right now. Yeah, it's true. It's insane. And yet there's still people complaining. Do you know <sighs> what rule number one is? 
no whining. Yeah. Do you know what rule number two is? Remember rule number one. <laughs> Those are good rules. Those are good rules. It's on our morning show when we give stuff away. Like we tell you when we're going to give it away or we tell you when something's going to go on sale. Right. And if you don't go and get it when you, you have to, rule number one is there's no whining. Yeah. yeah. So there, we're going to give you all these Star Wars movies and then you're going to whine and whine and whine. And then when we take them away, you whine and whine and whine. That Star Wars gone. movie was too much like the original. <laughs> well, that Star Wars movie was not enough like the original. <laughs> we'll get into that later when we talk about Star Wars. <laughs> and now we're all hoping that Rise of Skywalker is the Goldilocks of Star Wars. It's just right. Just right. We'll see. I don't even care. I'm just happy we're getting it. Oh, I agree. A hundred percent. So, cool. all right. Well, thank you for listening and we won't see you at the movies. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? <laughs> I didn't want to join in. You were doing so well by yourself. <laughs>